Transformers Rise of the Beast is out now, bringing us back to the world of Optimus Prime and Megatron and explosions and mayhem. And today we're going to take a look at those robots in disguise and try to find out the most powerful Transformer of them all. Yeah, we're going to rank each and every last Transformer from weakest to strongest. So let's get to it. What's up guys, I'm Daniel and this is Danco. We do fight breakdowns every week, plus the occasional power ranking video like this one or things like that. So if that seems interesting to you, we'll sit back and enjoy the video. Hit that like button. If you want to, go hit the subscribe button while you're at it. Now let's get to it. Insecticons are great for spying on enemies, but being the size of a bug definitely has its downsides too. Igor is Megatron's pet, built straight out of the head of a repurposed Decepticon. The doctor serves as the Decepticon's field medic, but I definitely would not trust him to operate on me. Reedman is what happens when a swarm of Microcons combine together. The combined mantis-like form is razor thin, allowing for near invisibility when seen from certain angles. Brains is a Decepticon turned Autobot and has a ton of information at his disposal, hence his name, Brains. Wheelie is another Decepticon turned Autobot, and I think he's the only official Transformer that's sexually attracted to humans. Squeaks is definitely the most surprising Autobot, because this little guy definitely does not scream warrior or fighter. Frenzy gives off major manic energy, but he's also really great at gathering information, so you kind of got to take what you can get. Freezers are spine-chilling insectoid-like terracons under Scourge's command that sniff out their prey and function as weapons for the terracons. Alice might have been your dream girl in college but then she sticks out her long metal tongue and transforms into a bloodthirsty killing robot and you begin to reevaluate all your life choices. Bulldog is proof that old age comes for us all, even Transformers. Canopy is great at hiding and staying under the radar, but you can only do that for so long. Laserbeak honestly might be the most competent Decepticon out there, a great assassin and enforcer, it's really only his small size that's truly holding him back. A knife-wielding motorcycle punk, Mohawk is incredibly loyal and goes hard. Too bad he just never shuts up. Sideways is always seen hanging out with other bigger Decepticons, mostly because Sideways is a bit of a coward. Skids and Mudflap some racist stereotypes, and a big failed attempt at comedic relief. They're more often fighting each other than actually fighting Decepticons. Cogman might just be a robot butler, but he's one butler that you really don't want to piss off. Day Trader thrives in a post-Transformers world, where all the Autobots are on the run. Steel Jaws are wolf-like creatures used by Lockdown to hunt down intruders and prey that venture into his ship. Ravage is definitely the coolest Tiger Decepticon you'll ever see, with a body perfectly built to hit an opponent hard and hit them fast and keep on hitting them until they stay down for good. We never really saw that much from Trench. He's basically just there as a massive product placement for Caterpillar. Brawn took place in the Battle of Cybertron, but when Optimus told them to retreat, he took it very seriously because we never saw Brawn again. Jolt was one of the Autobots who answered Optimus Prime's call to come to Earth in the two years since Megatron's defeat, and is a unique Autobot because he's got electrical powers. Built by KSI, Junk Heap is a waste management garbage truck composed of three robots and are mostly mindless drones built by humans using the element Transformium. Cliff Jumper was one of the Autobots who retreated from Cybertron and is incredibly loyal. He'd rather die than give up any information. 
Brawl is all about war, fighting, and explosions. Especially if he's the one creating the explosions and it's an Autobot that's exploding. Chromia is one of the motorcycle sisters, being incredibly skilled and light and quick on her feet. Alita One is another motorcycle sister. The only thing that puts her above Chromia is cause she's got some romantic history with none other than Optimus Prime. Two heads are man-made transformers built to resemble Shockwave, just with an extra head. Several of these bots were built by KSI, and after Galvatron took over, they were sent out to fight the Autobots and capture the seed in Hong Kong. Scorponok is the perfect ambush predator. He's like the master at playing hide and seek. It's just that he's often both the hider and the seeker. Jazz was Optimus Prime's first lieutenant, but that still didn't save him from Megatron's wrath. Bone Crusher was born to hate. He hates Autobots, he hates his fellow Decepticons, he even hates himself. And all that translates into Bone Crusher trying to destroy everything around him. KSI bosses were more man-made Transformers built by KSI, and were sent out by Galvatron to capture the seed in Hong Kong in order to cyberform the Earth. Onslaught is the leader of the Combaticons, and in typical Decepticon fashion, he'll use his big size to bully everyone smaller than him. Blitzwing is famous for being the one who took Bumblebee's voice but B definitely got him back for that one. I think Jetfire had the potential to be way higher up on this list, but old age finally got the better of him and slowed him down. Wheeljack was the Autobot's chief inventor and scientist, creating countless powerful weapons and giving off major Albert Einstein vibes. Ape Link was the original leader of the Maximals, determined to keep the transport key out of the hands of Scourge and Unicron. Grinder is a combat specialist and master strategist, always several steps ahead of his opponents. Stratosphere loves being in the sky and believes that he's near unbeatable once he's up in the air. Nitro Zeus comes across as a loudmouth, egotistical jerk, and he is. Problem is, Nitro definitely has the power and skill to back all that talk up. Rampage is a pretty violent guy. A member of the Constructicons, he leaves behind a trail of destruction and terror everywhere he goes. The Wreckers are a team of NASCAR enthusiast Autobots, which makes me think they're definitely some major rednecks. The monstrous Decepticon Dreadbot is tough, destructive, he's hard to kill, and even harder to control. Hot Rod is the brother in arms to Bumblebee, and he definitely comes in handy with his time gun, a weapon that slows down time all around him. Air Azer is able to provide some much needed aerial support during any fight, and she is incredibly loyal, ready and willing to die for the cause. Battle Trap is an elite scout and enforcer for the Terracons, someone who takes great pride in being part of the most sinister group of hunters to ever stalk the universe. RC is an Autobot field commander, and although never the biggest or the toughest, she's short, fast, nimble, and can pack a punch. She's been trained to use her speed to her advantage, striking fast and sudden then disappearing again as fast as she had appeared in the first place. The Dreads are a unit of particularly fearsome Decepticons. Their specialty is infiltration and the assassination of high-profile targets. They're also such unpleasant monsters that even the other Decepticons tend to dislike them. Dropkick doesn't particularly like being on Earth, but he's always down to hunt for Autobots, cause some explosions, and liquefy some humans along the way. Possibly the most homicidal Transformer ever, Berserker is the one Decepticon the United States wouldn't release. 
Soundwave is the Decepticon's communication specialist, able to take over communications and information on a global scale. After all, information is power. Sideswipe fights a whole lot like a roller derby player, moving around on his wheels, all fast and agile, ready to cut up any Decepticon he sees. Blackout is the first Decepticon we saw, and the last Decepticon a lot of Autobots ever got the chance to see. He was Megatron's right hand for a while, ready to hunt down and kill anyone his master ordered. Nightbird is a highly skilled and deadly sword-wielding Terracon. Ratchet is the Autobots' team medic, and while he typically focuses more on repairing than fighting, he's able to put his medical tools to deadly use. Barricade transformed into a police car, just so he could gain humans' trust before killing them. And that's not even the worst thing about him. The worst thing about him is that he just refuses to die. Crosshairs might be a little haughty and full of himself, but when the chips are down, he's the Autobot you want by your side. Mostly because of his lightning fast draw speed and his willingness to run in there guns a blazing. Shatter is definitely the brains between her and Dropkit, but don't let her fool you. She might play the good cop, but she's really the more won't kill you yet cop. Mirage might be a bit impatient and a bit reckless, but his ability to trick and manipulate his opponents, throw up projections or create mirages can never be questioned. Stinger is meant to be better than Bumblebee in every way. Your perfect choice for a KSI bot ready to search and destroy. Starscream is the air commander for the Decepticons, and while he might serve as Megatron's second in command, he secretly got ambitions to take over and rule Cybertron himself. Too bad he's too much of a coward to ever make that happen. Drift is a commando of few words and many ancient blades. While he's not trying to hide his past as a Decepticon, he would much rather just let his swords do the talking. His strength lies in both his mastery over his collection of swords and his composure in battle. Cheater is a speedy maximal that can mimic the abilities of a cheetah. During the fight against Scourge and the other Terracons, Cheater maximized and was able to tear through a whole bunch of Terracon drones, but eventually became overwhelmed by the Endless Swarm. Despite being a quadruped, Devcon is still a formidable foe to tangle with, towering over many other Cybertronians. It required several Autobots teaming up on him at once in order to take him down. Hound is the Autobot's new weapon specialist and absolutely loves all things guns and loves fighting. He'll charge in ready to take on anyone who stands in his way, even ready to take on a whole Decepticon army all by himself. Rhinox is a rhinoceros maximal and would take place in the final fight against the Terracons, putting his massive warhammer to good use. He's big, he's tough, He's angry, what's well, not to love? One of the Constructicons, the gigantic demolisher, may not be the sharpest tool in the shed. Luckily, he is smart enough to know when to fight openly and when to stick to the shadows. When he arrived on Earth to find Megatron dead, Demolisher went into hiding, gathering smaller Decepticons who needed a big, blunt instrument to cower behind. Slug doesn't like you, and he does not like your face. He doesn't really take orders very well, unless it involves headbutting an opponent into next week. He's so powerful, he can level anything in his path with a fit of white hot dino rage. Scorn is what happens when you combine a destructive war machine with a predator. Nothing less than a destroyer on two legs, He's strong and massive. He wields the Scrapmaker's sword in his robot mode, and his massive size in his Spinosaurus mode makes him almost impossible to bring down. 
Strafe is a gigantic two-headed fire-breathing metal dragon-like pterosaur and seeing it swoop down on you with lightning speed like some kind of movie monster would shake even the toughest of fighters. Deadly efficient with a cold devotion to logic, Shockwave is a killing machine like few others, one of the very few who could rival Megatron. He stands ready and willing to destroy whichever Autobots dare stand in his way with his arm-mounted Astromag cannon. Ironhide is the Autobot's resident weapons specialist and Optimus Prime's old friend. He's a little more trigger-happy than his fellow Autobots, as he can be more willing to push the Autobot code to the limit if he thinks he'll get the job done faster. He has more guns than a small third world country, and he may or may not have blown up a planet with said guns. When confronted by a threat to Quintessa, too powerful for the demonic Infernicons to handle individually, they combine to take the form of Infernicus. He's composed of five different Infernicons, Skulk, Rupture, Thrash, Gorge, and Glug, serving as Quintessa's ultimate enforcer. Scourge is the cunning, ruthless, and treacherous leader of the Terracons, and the most fearsome hunter in the universe. He's a ferocious but patient killer, who makes sure that anyone who opposes him or his master is gonna die, and his body is covered with insignias claimed as grisly trophies of his many kills. Leader of the Maximals, Optimus Primal has been living on Earth disguised as a 13-foot-tall mechanical gorilla, having kept watch from the Peruvian jungles for the return of an evil they've been waging eternal war with across many galaxies. He's seen enough tragedy to compel a gentle wisdom. Of course, the best part of wisdom is knowing when to use your giant ape fist to protect the innocent. Whether he's formed from six, seven, eight, or even nine Constructicons, Devastator is a giant among giants. Devastator is also a tormented being, only being familiar with rage and pain, and relying on those raw instincts in a fight. Megatron, aka Galvatron, was not always the viciously powerful and brutally direct leader of the Decepticons. He was once brother in arms with Optimus and a student of Sentinel Prime, appointed to be Cybertron's protector and commander of its defense force. But Megatron resented his comrade, knowing he was a Prime and therefore Sentinel's favorite son. This anger allowed the Fallen to ensnare him and led to the revival of the Decepticons. Even without the Fallen, though, it's not hard to imagine that Megatron would have erupted Cybertron into war to rid himself of Optimus. Megatron tends to become so obsessed with the object of his desires that he can ignore secondary matters, creating glaring flaws in his plans. Otherwise, he likely wouldn't have chased after the Allspark alone and spent centuries trapped in the Arctic. But trying to talk Megatron out of blindly going after his goals is useless. He will risk his world, his troops, and even his own spark to achieve his goals. These things don't matter to Megatron. For all his evils and all his faults though, Megatron does genuinely strive to save his home planet someday, and with it, the Cybertronian race, even if it means he has to rule it with his iron fist and put his bloodlust to good use to do so. Sentinel Prime hails from an older time when Cybertron was the galaxy's crown jewel and the Transformer race was full of promise and potential. The only known remaining Prime, he personified what a leader should be, wise, compassionate, and a more than worthy warrior. Revered by both Autobots and Decepticons, Few would dare stand against his shield and Primax blade. Though when Sentinel was presumably lost forever aboard the Ark, 
Optimus Prime, his hand-picked successor, was left to fill his void. The loss of Sentinel signaled the end of Cybertron's golden age, and the planet spiraled deeper into war. Some who recall Sentinel's reign bitterly remember when Transformers were masters of their fate, rather than scattered to the stars and living as exiles. Above all though, Sentinel Prime is a staunch patriot. He loves his home planet with all that he is and will do anything, even go to the extremes, to protect it. Even the Decepticons are afraid of this guy, because once Lockdown has been hired to track down a subject, nothing stops him from completing his transaction short of total deactivation. Answering only to his creators, Lockdown holds himself above the Autobot Decepticon war and sees both sides as squabbling children that he has to rein in personally. He doesn't think much higher of other civilized species across the galaxy, though he isn't above working with them if it suits him. Lockdown is a bounty hunter at heart, always fulfilling the contract and missions he's assigned to as long as he's paid. He doesn't really care what he has to do in order to fulfill his contract, eager to destroy entire planets if it's necessary. As king of the Dinobots, Grimlock believes that the best approach to a problem is to smash it first, worry about the specifics later. One of the most powerful warriors in the universe, he likes nothing more than showing off his strength, leaving his enemies stomped, chomped, or turned to ash by a blast of his fire breath. This rather rough and tough attitude extends to his Autobot companions, who are expected to meet Grimlock's standard of strength. That said, the Autobots have a lot less to fear from this behemoth than the Decepticons. The largest subterranean life form native to Cybertron, drillers are not to be taken lightly. Enormous, multi tentacled beasts capable of burrowing through the ground or through buildings, they're capable of great destruction and carnage on a massive scale. They're semi-sentient at best and can only obey simple commands, but they also develop intense loyalty to their masters. Naturally, all these qualities have endeared them to Shockwave, who keeps one as a pet and personal transport. The one owned by Shockwave is bred specifically for war, and as such is considerably larger than other drillers. Bumblebee is one of Optimus Prime's most trusted lieutenants, and although he might not appear to be the strongest or the most powerful of the Autobots, Bumblebee more than makes up for this with a bottomless well of luck, determination, and bravery. He would gladly give his life to protect others and stop the Decepticons. He's one of the best fighters in the entire series, easily able to take down whole swarms of Decepticons or Terracons by himself, and is one of the only Transformers with the unique ability to reform himself after an injury. Dragonstorm is a massive three-headed dragon, the mighty combined form of the legendary 12 Guardian Knights who formed to stop Quintessa. It appeared in medieval times to help Merlin wipe out the Saxons and win the war for Camelot, and then in modern day, reformed again in order to help Optimus take down Quintessa and her Infernicons. If the first Transformers were Primus' disciples, then the Fallen is his Judas. At the dawn of time, he was Megatronus one of a brotherhood of vastly powerful beings dedicated to the well-being of their world. But the Fallen would turn against his brother Primes in order to pursue his own ends, earning the moniker of the first Decepticon in the process. His frightening form is a metal cage for primal burning forces of chaos, giving him the appearance of a living furnace and purging him of what empathy and morality remained. All that remains now is hatred and purest rage. The Fallen is immensely powerful. He commands the mystic arts, and when at full strength, 
he can unmake creation at will. He's rarely defeated. At best, he's contained, where he waits with eternal patience for the chance to unleash his dark powers once again. Quintessa is a mysterious and powerful space sorceress. The self-described prime of life, she claims to have created the Cybertronian species and considers Cybertron to be hers to command. But then again, she's also been referred to as the Great Deceiver. So how much of what she says is actually true may be up for debate. What does appear to be true about Quintessa is that she's a ruthless, genocidal psychopath with massive delusions of grandeur, which quite frankly makes her more endearing to the tyrannical Megatron than to the noble Optimus Prime. Speaking of Optimus Prime, of course he had to be the most powerful Autobot. I mean, he is the leader of the Autobots for a reason. Long ago, he was just the humble leader of Cybertron's science division, which studied the AllSpark, and was protected by Lord High Protector Megatron's military. But when Megatron was corrupted by the Fallen, Optimus discovered that he was the last of the Dynasty of the Primes, hidden away when the Fallen destroyed their lineage. In response to Megatron's attempts to seize the AllSpark and conquer other worlds, Optimus assumed his proper title and rallied the Autobots to stand against the Decepticons. As obsessively as Megatron strives to achieve his objective, Optimus is equally as dedicated to stopping him, even at the cost of his life, his world, and if necessary, his own people. It was on his order that the AllSpark was sent into space dooming Cybertron to a slow death and his people to a nomadic life. The sacrifices he has made weigh heavily on him, but they must be done for there's no other choice. He knows the ambitions that lurk in Megatron's heart, and they must never see the light of day. Lives must be kept free from the threat of Megatron's tyranny, no matter the cost. This obsession with the defeat of Megatron has robbed Optimus of some of his earlier idealism, creating a certain ruthlessness beneath his otherwise honest and caring personality. Prime is not one for second chances, and is willing to consider any action that might lead to victory, short of directly sacrificing those he cares about. Unicron is the eternal arch enemy of his twin brother Primus also known as the Lord of Chaos, the Chaos Bringer and the Planet Eater, he is dedicated to consuming the universe. His massive form is powered by the consumption of planets, moons, stars, and even the very fabric of existence. Unicron will not be finished until his ultimate goal is attained, to bring an end to the annoying creation all around him, and to find peace by becoming the living center of a swirling, infinite torrent of nothingness at the end of all things. But what do y'all think? Sound off in the comments down below. I know you're gonna have thoughts and feelings on this one for sure. If you stuck around this long and made it to the end of the video, that's amazing. Thank you so much for watching and for supporting us. And if you wanna go subscribe, well, go subscribe. You're going to see more videos like this one every single week. I'll see y'all then. I'll see y'all next time.